Look who I found waiting for me when I got home today. It's my cat, Maki. Hi, Maki. What are you doing outside? You should be inside. Not running around like some hooligan. Like some little thug. At least he's sitting in front of my house, guarding the joint. But yeah. Yeah, it's my hood. Don't be stepping up in my hood. Ah, oh, so dumb. All right, um, back to Warhammer. What up, players? It's Warboss Day up in this mood. Um, I thought I'd do a little video for people who are totally new to this hobby, or maybe just even starting and getting into it, and um, I guess found my videos and kind of uh, wanted to know what you need to really get into this hobby. Um, what? Basically, yeah, what, what you need to get into this hobby. And today I'm going to look at it from the Warhammer Fantasy perspective because that's kind of how I started. And um, so this is just going to be like a hobby essentials kind of video. So maybe you are at your hobby store and or um, wherever, wherever you like comic book store, wherever, and you saw one of these, a box for for a game with little painted miniatures on it and you thought oh wow that's kind of interesting so you picked it up and um, looked at the back and you kind of read the description or whatever and um, you thought it was really interesting so you thought hey what do I need to get into it and maybe the person at the cash register helped you out maybe they didn't maybe they told you oh yeah it's a really expensive hobby you need like all sorts of stuff to get into it um, but let me tell you what you what you really need to get into this hobby is just a, um, a, a will to, to, to collect and to model and to paint and to, to game with, uh, with other people. It's, it's totally different from like a video game where you, know, you only need to be by yourself in your room uh, with your controller. You really need to get out there and um, be willing to be artistic and to put your your art out there. So apparently the next thing that uh, that you were either pitched or that you picked up was one of these magazines, White Dwarf. And um, you flip through it and inside you saw lots of pictures of miniatures and the game and um, especially with these newer ones, uh, painting guides in the back and you saw how big this game was because there's like so many different armies for each faction and so many different armies for each I mean of course obviously each faction but so many different games there's this war uh, war of the ring Lord of the Rings game there's regular Warhammer fantasy the one that started it all and there was you've also got um, Warhammer 40,000 these guys. So then you thought, wow, this is, there's like so much stuff, what should I get into first? At least I did. So then it was just a matter of which army do you like the most, which game system do you like the most, and which do you want to get into the most. So I'm going to be talking today about um, probably your first big purchase in the Warhammer hobby is the, the beginner box set, uh, the starter set, I guess they call it. And there's two really for one for Warhammer and War Fantasy and one for Warhammer 40k and the one for Warhammer Fantasy is called Island of Blood. They are both pretty pricey so I'm going to be talking today about the one for Warhammer Fantasy. Um, this is the card that comes with the Island of Blood box set and um, I don't really have much room to show to, sh to show you like the whole box on my little painting desk, but this is the Warhammer Fantasy like the cover for the rule book, and in the Island of Blood box set, you get a whole bunch of things. You kind of get everything you need to just kind of start the hobby, except the two things you need to start really playing um, are plastic glue, like Zappa Gap here. Or 
uh, liquid cement for plastic models, which is what I use. <coughs> Doesn't come with any kind of glue in Island of Blood. Or the Warhammer 40,000 one either. So you need glue and you also need... Where are my clippers? You need clippers to clip the uh, screws out. Uh, Igor. Igor, I'm so lost. Where are my clippers? Here they are, monster. So, a bunch of different hobby um, companies sell these, but they're pretty much what you want to look for is, you know, a, a good grip and, um, and that's it. Because I had these other ones that were just metal and it had no grip and it you really needed to squeeze down on it and then it hurt your it hurt my hand after using it for a while so uh, make sure you have a good grip and also a little exacto knife to clean to clean up your model clean the edges so once you buy your clippers your exacto knife and your liquid cement or your plastic glue and your island of blood box set you went home and you said oh this is so awesome now i'm going to get into it i'm going to be Super cool, and you probably bought some paint too, and paint brushes because the guy at the hobby store uh, recommended you some. I'm just replaying my own memories. The way this happened to you might be totally different. Okay, and then you opened it up and you saw a bunch of these called sprues. Um, that's the catch all term for these giant plastic uh, frames with all these models on it. And um, so that's where we are at today. Today this is going to be an unboxing of what's inside the Island of Blood box set. And I'm only going to be talking about the models because you also get the rule book, like a small little rule book for the game. Um, you get a little pamphlet about the Island of Blood box set, which is really for uh, little kids. It kind of look like, looks like because it's a really brief overview and doesn't really explain anything. <coughs> Um, but I'm going to be talking today about the models for the two factions that you get in the game. So, two of the Warhammer Fantasy races that you can collect, and um, these models are made from, are the High Elves, which are these guys, here, and the Skaven, or Rat Men, which are these little guys, here. Now their fluff and their background and interesting is very, uh, their, their background is very interesting, I think, especially the Skaven. High Elves are kind of pretty much based on the Tolkien Lord of the Rings High Elves, noble defenders um, of good and justice and, you know, kind of, if you're, if, if you're like really hardcore, old school, traditional, then um, that is, these are these guys are going to be kind of totally up your alley. They fight for good and justice, and um, and they're also like a dying race. There's they're they're kind of dying out. They have like such great background in history. While these guys are very very fluffy. The term fluffy in this hobby means <clears throat> um, immersed in the background and the fiction. And I, I use it a lot in my videos, and I, I realize I've never explained it for people who might be new to this hobby. Um, that, and the fact that they're fluffy, and the fact that um, they're so iconic of Warhammer, these chaotic, chaotic rap men. In in the Warhammer universe, you've got two main factions: Order, um, which are the good guys, and Destruction, I believe, which are the bad guys, or Chaos. And chaos is like the, the catch-all term for for the evil um, the evil races and the evil factions. Well, not all of them, but for the purposes of starting this hobby, uh, pretty much. So, what do you get in <clears throat> in the Island of Blood box set? You get a whole bunch of different miniatures, and today we're going to be looking, like I said, at the high elf ones. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all the high elf pieces. I'm going to show them to you, uh, not really on the sprue, but I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to, um, and, and then we're going to talk about them. I'm going to put them together, and then I'm going to show them to you all built up. So on this first sprue, what do we have? We have one half of what's called an Illyrian Reaver, which is a horse, a uh, light cavalry <coughs> horseman. It's a new release of a model, and uh, of a model that used to be in metal, and it's very, very well detailed. The detail on this starter kit is just amazing with 
all of the um, with with what they've done to to make the model so so detailed. Get you can see all the all the uh, hair detail in the hair and the arrows and the armor. You've got these Lothern Sea Guard. Uh, Lothern is just a place in the Warhammer fiction, and they're characterized by sea dragons. So they've got these shields. Used to be back in the old days when I started the hobby, shields came completely flat, and you had to paint on the design. So now they have these uh, embossed shields, which I think is really great for starting uh, modelers. And the detail in these high elves is a lot cleaner than it used to be. Uh, the old models for high elves are kind of uh, chunky. You had to piece them together with like put put the legs t together with the torso, together with the arms, and then the head, and they all came separate. And they looked a lot smaller and shorter. These high elves are modeled to look very sleek and tall, and um, their poses. There's only one pose that they have, but it's very it's very good. It's very regal. And then you've got these sword masters, <coughs> who are very heavily armored. They have these giant swords. Um, and they have this different look to them. So we also have some character models, but today we're going to be cutting out and looking at these uh, these three different models: the Illyrian Reaver, the Sword Master, and the uh, Lothern Sea Guard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clippers in the next part of this video, and I'm going to clip out all of the all of those models, and then we'll glue them together real time, just as you would do if you were somebody who bought the Island of Blood box set and decided to uh, collect the high elves because, I don't know, you thought rats were icky. So stay tuned, players! Okay, so I've got my space, I've got my clippers, my X-Acto knife, my hobby, glue, and I've got my sprue here. And like I said, we're starting off with the high elves, so here we go. actually zoom in a little bit closer because I'm going to have it at about this level. What am I doing? Like please! Hey there, master. So I remember getting into this hobby back in, I don't know, was it 4th edition? <clears throat> I don't even remember. And had high elves and goblins so, there was uh, bowmen, and spearmen, and um, the funny thing though was nowadays they can put these monsters on the sprue, like you've got the griffin for the high elves, um, these bigger, bigger models, <clears throat> and they put it right into the starter kit, so uh, when I started though, in 4th edition, they couldn't they, they didn't have the technology to do that. The models were not that detailed, so if you got the box set, the, the models were really, really very, very basic looking. And what they did was they included in the box set on, drawn on cardboard with like little stands, like uh, two-dimensional art of a uh, high elf general on a griffin or the, the orc and goblin uh, catapult, which is called the rock rock lava or stone lava and the, the main character on a chariot but it was just like a flat picture on cardboard and um, they had these little stands to represent you know what <laughs> where they were on the battlefield so there's they're like you get all these models for the infantry and you get these things to represent the high elf <coughs> bolt thrower um, and all the all, all the big monsters like the griffin So I'm really glad that the technology and making these things has advanced to the point where you could just buy a box set and have all of these, all of these huge detailed pieces. If they had that back when, back when I started, or if I started at this point, then you know I'd be, I'd be very impressed. But it was very impressive back then too. I think I still have those like. Hundred or like fifty goblins with spears and um, <clears throat> little night goblins, monopose, like only one pose. They were they they all came kind of much together. You didn't have to glue them back then. All you had to do was put them into their bases. 
Um, you'll notice too when you're putting these things together that they have letters that correspond to where they go. So, like this, this guy is A. So he's one Illyrian Reaver. Yeah, so like I said, this is more a video for people who are new to the hobby because most of us veterans have one of these Island of Blood box sets. Um, most of us veterans picked it up when when the new edition came out a couple years back, so... Um, <clears throat> this is really for, for new people to the hobby. But if you do have one of these and you're watching it just to watch it, then thank you. I appreciate your viewership. I love how they gave these um, Lothern Sea Guard all the detail of like the seaweed and um, the sea dragon kind of motif really separates them from just regular high elves with, <clears throat> with bows on their back. Okay, something else that you're going to get in your giant box set are, is a plastic bag full of little black squares with uh, slots in them and these are called bases. These are going to be what you actually base put your model to stand on. So after you cut your models out of your out of the sprue, then before you glue them together, what advanced modelers or uh, experienced modelers like myself like to do is we take our exacto knife or some other sanding instrument and we <coughs> shave off what's called mold lines. Mold lines are created um, by by magical gnomes in the molding process and there are these lines I don't know how they're created I'm just saying that every model has them and um, nobody likes them because when you paint them they get in the way and uh, they show up on the finished product so it's always good for you to clean them up before you start painting them I need to find a better way of doing it because when I clean mold lines off of high elf helmets with my exacto knife they inevitably create little dents that don't get out. Little Harvey dents. <clears throat> so there's that. They have um, mold lines and um, mold lines are usually the problem but you also get you know it's you, you have imperfect cutting when you're cutting off of the sprue so you also get these little nubbins of sprue still on so you want to be a little bit more careful with those because you could really gouge yourself and I was always taught to shave away like this um, I never got good at it though and this is really the way you should you should use your exacto knife shaving away from yourself but just like learning how to write with a pencil or a pen a certain way I also heard that you know you're supposed to hold pencils and pens like this but I learned it like this which is improper way but it's just the way that I learned it so this is also the way that I learned to use my exacto knife by cutting towards myself and it's resulted in many little cuts and um, much blood for the blood god oh you newbies don't know what I'm talking about okay so there's we're just gonna continue shaving oh my dog is barking I'm so sorry and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect but um, you just want to make sure that you clean the majority of the mold line off and the extra, extra sprue, sprue nubbins. Uh, okay, here's the helmet for the... Ah! Darren Reaver. If this keeps up, I'm just going to pause the video and wait till they calm down a little bit. <coughs> I'll be quiet. Shut up. Uh, stop it. Okay, he's not gonna stop. So I'm gonna stop filming. I'm gonna finish cleaning these mold lines off and um, wait till things calm down a bit over here. And uh, and then we'll go into the, the gluing phase. 
You're gonna notice that most mold lines on spears have been in the center of the front, so that's where you kind of want to be extra careful for. Okay, so uh, pause and come back in just a little bit. Okay, so I've got my guys all cut out of one sprue. I've got three sword masters <coughs> and two Lothern sea guards. And I've also got my Illyrian reaver, which we are going to put together on camera. So these models kind of come really uh, easily. Put, uh, what am I looking for? They, they were really, they're really easy to put together. They were made in such a way that you know you don't have to you don't really need the glue um, you're gonna need glue for every other box kit out there in the range but for beginners and stuff you really only need the set because they're snap fit which means that they were made in such a way that <clears throat> you can snap them together take this Lothian Sea Guard for example and they will hold together just fine in every other box set in in the game the pieces come separate and they don't they don't snap together like this. They there's no nub on the end of this guy's shoulder to snap his arm into. But <clears throat> for this you really don't need glue. Even though it's 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 recommended because when you start playing with them and moving them around, there's nothing holding the the arm to the shoulder plate. To uh, to the shoulder. So I'm gonna take my liquid cement for plastic models and I'm gonna put a dab in there in the shoulder sprockets. And there you go. So snap fit and glue really makes the best bond or hold. <clears throat> I'm going to now open up one of these little packages with the bases in it. You're also gonna find that most of the model kits for everything in the game do not have these slots inside of them and you're actually going to have to glue them uh, glue the feet to the to the to the solid plastic base <clears throat> for let me, let me show you for comparison here's a base a little bit larger for an orc model and as you can see there's no slot inside of it but these are good and like i said they're for beginners let me just double check to make sure they're all in horizontally. They used to make them so that they were diagonal. And yep. <clears throat> Here we go, diagonal slot bases. So I don't know which is which. They should have just made them all one way. So let me show you the difference <clears throat> between diagonal slot bases and horizontal ones. Oh, my bases are falling everywhere. So, horizontal ones are usually for models with uh, straight poses where they're going, like looking straight on, or you can put them this way and they're looking straight at you. But if you have a model who's kind of like at a slant, which kind of looks like this one is, <coughs> then diagonal diagonal is better because um, you put them in and it looks like they're standing and staring straight forward. Yeah, I guess they're supposed to go into the diagonal ones. Looks like they don't really fit too well on this on the square ones. <coughs> See if I was smart what I would do is count how many bases come in each bag and then correspond with how many models are in the set and then figure it out that way but but then I wouldn't be an artist I wouldn't be going off of inspiration so I'm just going to assume that because they look better on this diagonal slot of base that that's that's how they were meant to go <clears throat> like this guy see how he's facing straight forward so we're going to add some cement to the bottom. The great thing about the sword masters is that you don't have to worry about putting their arms and their heads on 
or gluing the torso to the legs, they all come in one piece. You cut them off the sprue, you clean them up, and When you take a look at some of the older high elf models, like if you decide by looking at the Swordmaster, like wow, this guy looks so awesome. He uh, has such great detail, and like his expression is really, really mean and and really awesome looking. And you decide to go out and and collect high elves, and you pick up the old high elf archer kit or the spearman kit. Um, those models are really showing their age, meaning that when you glue them together. Uh, they look a little bit shorter, more squat. There, they look a little bit, little bit more cartoony, not as, um, not as mean looking. <coughs> I think. Anyways, then here we have our Lothian Sea Guard. We'll glue the other guy's spear into his arm before we put the first guy on his base. <coughs> put him on and I'm gonna do the rest of the sprues on my own because they're all kind of identical except for the awesome griffin and wizard figures so when we come back I'll have glued together all of the high elves um, the infantry as you would call it because they are on foot and then <coughs> and then I'll go through the giant monster that comes in the box the griffin with the high elf general on it as well as the multi-part uh, model for the wizard. So the last thing we're going to do with this one is we're going to put together the Illyrian Reaver. And this guy comes in three parts. Luckily if you cut them all out and then you get them mixed up in your box, they all have the letters for their corresponding parts on the inside. So this is piece A, and as long as you remember which heads. I don't even know if, if you need the same heads because the, they all kind of look the same. I think it's more the, the bodies because the bodies are so individually different. <clears throat> so what I figured is the best way to do it is the head comes with this little nub on the bottom that slots into here. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there as you can see right there and then I'm going to put the head piece in right there and see how it fits really nicely into that little slot and then I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue into each little hole and a little bit about uh, around the rim you don't need too much because it's really gonna be sticking uh, to these holes in the center it's just for to seal it up okay and then we're gonna put our horse little horsey together we keep the head in place. <clears throat> and look at that. Doesn't that look so cool? Like the <clears throat> the old models, the old cavalry models are you are done by glue you glue together the rider you glue together the horse, then you stick the horse on the rider, and this way is, although it's less poseable, um, it creates, I think, a better final picture because everything looks like it's where it's supposed to go. So, really like that model, and uh, these Illyrian Reaver models. So now we're adding a little bit of glue to the, the bottom so we can glue it to its base. <coughs> and these guys come on cavalry bases, which are just wider bases, and they have slots for the for them to go in. So you just put a little bit of glue and you pop them in. Or another way you could do this too if you don't want to get glue on your fingers by having to work and fidget with this with these uh, cavalry slotted bases is you put them in first, slot them into their base first, and then 
move them from the bottom, kind of like this, just a little bit. One or the other will work. You don't have to do it both. I'm just showing you both ways. You can decide which one you like, but it creates a good solid hold there. And there you go, this is one sprue. <clears throat> so I'm going to continue cutting, sanding, and building. And um, I'll show you what they all look like in just a second. And then we, uh, once I've got them all cut and put together, then we are going to put together our giant monster and, like I said, our wizard. All right, players. Took me a little while, but this is <clears throat> this is it. And I'm actually going to wrap up this video because I didn't realize how long it was getting. But um, I'm going to show you all the infantry and cavalry, and then uh, next video I'll, I'll make another video on putting together the characters. So. Let me show you my Lothern Sea Guard. These guys are known in the fluff, in the history, for being able to carry a shield, a spear, a sword, and a bow and arrows. So they've all got these fantastically modeled and sculpted bows and arrows on them. <clears throat> but uh, they're, they're, they're built to look like they are holding the line and they are about to receive a charge, with, so they're not um, holding their arrows out, or bows out, they're, they've got their spears um, up and ready to uh, to fight fight with the dreaded enemy. <clears throat> with these guys, you also get a champion here with the sword. Let's take a little bit of a close-up look at him. So check out that helmet. You can see that they really tried to stick to the nautical nature of uh, this unit with the with the helmet kind of got like a sea dragon motif to it even the sword the design on the sword looks very uh it's got like two fish on the hilt under here okay i just noticed that it's got two little upside down fish it's, uh i don't know what to think about that and um of course the sea dragon <coughs> You also get a standard. So the thing about these guys is the Lothern Sea Guard is not a unit that has its own box set, which means that the only way to get these models is to buy an Island of Blood box. And because they're so <coughs> uh, fluff-wise versatile, they can have spears or a uh, bow and arrow. Uh, a lot of people take them, or a lot of people want to take them, but you only get enough parts in the box to make ten and three of those ten are going to be the champion, the musician, and this guy, the standard bearer. Which means that if you want to have like full units and stuff, then you're going to have to go to a bits dealer or just trade with your friends who don't want theirs. And you know, say, hey, I'll give you all my Skaven. If you're not planning on using Skaven, if you'll give me all your high elves. <coughs> um, that's what I did actually with my old box set. A friend of mine who was collecting high elves back in fourth edition, uh, I believe we both picked up the boxes. I gave him all of my high elves. He gave me all of his goblins. Um, so you could do that. But I really, really like the, the sculpt, the molds for these guys. Like the, There's so much detail compared to the, the regular box set of high elf spearmen and bowmen that are out right now. And I, I think the molded design on the banner is just fantastic for new, new players, new people who are getting into the hobby. Uh, there's only one other guy of note here, the musician, so I'm going to show him to you right now. <clears throat> He's got kind of like a seashell kind of uh, horn, which is interesting because I live in Hawaii and um, Hawaiian culture, they, they used to blow on the seashells to make that... So I think that's, that's pretty cool, pretty interesting. Um, so those are the Lothan Sea Guard, I believe. Isn't that what they're called? Lothan Sea Guard? I don't know. I, yeah, I can't think of them right now, but here are the Sword Masters. Gosh, I just realized, what if I'm getting the name wrong? I think it's Lothan. Uh, here's the champion for the Sword Masters. He's got his helmet off. He's like, I don't need a helmet. No! Everybody else's helmets. <clears throat> Here's the molded banner. One thing about them, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this art heart uh, motif that um, high elves have had forever. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not gonna say anything else. Here's the horn blower that you can tell is more of a traditional molded horn. You can definitely see that painted up in silver or gold. It'd be really cool. I really like the, the scales on their armor. They're molded very, very well. They're all they all look even, they all have texture, like they're not all the same um, level and just like sculpted to look like scales. They're all you know, they all have, if you order a certain angle, they've, they've got shadows, they're molded really, really well, like actual scale armor. So the last thing I'm going to show you in this video are the Illyrian Reavers. <clears throat> this guy looks like he's just fired his bow. The detail on the sculpts, these sculpts, the Illyrian Reavers, is so amazing compared to, you know, the poor dark elf um, shades, or not shades, but they're their mounted um, horse horsemen look so horrible now in comparison because the those dark elf what are they called the dark elf dark riders just are so static and um, small compared to these models these models are so well done because they're new and you know it's it's no one's fault it's just that the dark elf um, dark rider models are just so so old but. You don't have to worry about that if you're just getting into the hobby. Um, I actually thought that a cool idea for a high elf army would be a high elf army built around um, the dark elves, uh, or, or a high elf army with dark elf uh, color scheme as if they were just um, the high elves and the dark elves in the background split. So the dark elves are the evil cousins of the high elves, and I thought it would be cool to paint one up like a paint and paint the high elf army up like the dark elf colors right after or right before they split. Um, so as you can see, a great thing about the hobby is that nobody can tell you how to paint your guys. Like on the cover of the box and on the Games Workshop website, you'll see that if you want to paint these high elves, they suggest a lot of whites for the cloth and a lot of blues for accent colors and whatever but you can paint them however you want if you have an interesting color scheme here's the champion I'll show you then you can just paint it however you want and you know the great thing about this game is that it's like an artistic thing as well a lot of people take the hobby just to be artistic and to um, develop their skills as a painter and as a modeler because these are not just you know two-dimensional pieces of paper that you paint on these are actual three-dimensional things that you can hold and manipulate and move around in your hand so when um, <clears throat> when you paint them and you put them on the board then like that's the best it's the best feeling in the world to me having a fully painted army on the board and that's kind of why I got into the hobby just because uh, that's all why a lot of people get into the hobby because you see these games being played and um, you see these massive amounts of figures on the table and if somebody has a well put together army that's painted to a high standard then it really it really makes you feel like you know like you're um, I don't know it's, it's it's a great feeling as as a as somebody who likes paint painting and drawing and, and artistry and stuff uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling to be playing or even watching a game where there are awesomely painted figures being moved around. And so if you got into this hobby because you saw a game being played at your store and um, you thought it was awesome and you wanted to get into it, just a couple of last minute things before I close this video and get ready to film the griffin and um, <coughs> wizard parts is that uh, it is expensive. There's no way around it. So if, if you're, you know, still a teenager or whatever then um, you know you're really going to be dependent on the kindness of your parents or whoever's going to be buying these models for you and um, and if not then you just have to watch out that you don't get too carried away with how much you buy because it's it's really easy if you have your own job and a credit card to say like oh I want this army oh okay now I want this army okay now I want this army and just get um, what we call shiny plastic shiny new model syndrome but, um, you know, that's, that's another discussion. The High Elves, great army, great fluff, 
I, I enjoyed um, unboxing them. I've never painted up a, a high elf before, so um, after I do my second unboxing video, I'm gonna experiment with some color schemes, see which one I like best, and then possibly do some tutorials, uh, if that's something you guys would like to see. But this, this is the first part of my two-part series on what's in the Island of Blood box set for the High Elves. I might do one for Skaven later, but just figured I'd do something new for my High Elf uh, viewers out there, or viewers who have High Elf armies <clears throat> that don't have the Island of Blood box set. Swordmasters and Seaguard do not come in their own boxes as of yet, but um, they're great models, great scopes, and um, I hope this video has given you a little bit of insight as to what you can expect when you purchase a box and want to collect it just for the high elves. Okay, so I'll see you in the next one, and hope you're all having a great weekend or week whenever you're watching this, and uh, talk to you later.